John Brennan is speaking right now. Let's listen in. Disturbing day where we've seen threats on your life and on the lives of Barack Obama, uh, Hillary Clinton, and others. What are your thoughts as we end today? Well, I think we're at a very unfortunate stage of our national history when um, we cannot have the civil discourse that we need about the future direction of our country and policies without having individuals, um, I think very disturbed individuals, resorting to attempted acts of violence. And so uh, I recognize that there are a lot of raw emotions and feelings in this country and very strong feelings for individual political uh, parties as well as individual politicians. But uh, this country was founded upon uh, the, uh, the foundation of freedom and liber liberty and freedom of speech. And if I and others are being targeted because we're speaking out and we're living up to uh, our responsibilities as citizens, I think that, again, is a very unfortunate uh, turn of events. So I have full confidence in my former law enforcement and intelligence colleagues to get to the bottom of this and to take the appropriate actions. I have been contacted by the folks in the security realm, uh, letting me know what they're doing. Uh, so this is something that I think all Americans who really cherish our freedoms and our liberties really should be outraged over and uh, try to do everything possible to bring that, uh, uh, the level of discourse down so that we are able to engage in a very constructive and productive way to make sure that this country is able to realize uh, its, its full potential, including on the political front. Donald Trump uh, made a statement earlier today in which he said, I just want to tell you that in these times, we have to unify. We have to come together <laughs> and send one very clear, strong, unmistakable message that acts or threats of political violence of any kind have no place in the United States of America. We live in a very divided nation. Have we reached a moment, finally, when we're capable of coming together? Well, I'm tempted to say that was said by Donald who? <laughs> well, I think it's very important for an individual who is in the Oval Office today to say exactly that, that we need to come together as a country. We need to unite. We may have differences, but this should be no reason whatsoever to resort to these types of acts of intimidation and potentially violence. I sincerely wish that Donald Trump, though, would have said these things previously and regularly. I wish that he would have encouraged people from all different backgrounds and political affiliations to come together and to try to resolve differences in a very um, positive manner. Unfortunately, I think Donald Trump too often has helped to incite uh, some of these feelings of, of anger, if not violence, um, when he points to acts of violence or also talks about you know, uh, swinging at somebody uh, from the press or the media. Uh, that's why I have spoken out so strongly, some would say very stridently, because of what I think is a continued failure on the part of Donald Trump to live up to what I think should be all of our expectations about what an American president should be doing, especially in times like this. I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I worked for six presidents, three Democrats and three Republicans. I had tremendous respect for all of them. I didn't agree with all the policies, but I always believed that they were trying to do what they believed was in the best interest of the country and not of themselves. And also I felt that at particular times when maybe tensions within this country were, were strong or emotions were strong, they were unifiers. I remember very vividly how President George W. Bush in the aftermath of 9-11 uh, was helping to rally this country so that we all stick together in the face of this foreign adversary who caused such great havoc, destruction, and, and carnage, uh, the 9-11 attacks. So uh, unfortunately, I think you know, Donald Trump has not helped to um, um, encourage the type of civil discourse and uh, engage public engagement. And his rhetoric uh, too frequently, I think, fuels these uh, feelings and sentiments that uh, now are bleeding over into potentially acts of violence. So 
I'm, I'm hoping that this is going to make it clear to him that what he has done heretofore, as far as a lot of this rhetoric, really is counterproductive. It is un-American. It is what a president should not be doing. What he said today is what the president should be doing, but follow up on those words with actions and with his future comments. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe this is a, is a turning point. To be clear, Mr. Pre uh, Mr. Director. Uh, to be clear, Mr. Director, does, does uh, the president's rhetoric embolden those who might commit these acts? I think one can make an argument that it has emboldened individuals to take matters into their own hands. And so when he compliments individuals who have, in fact, body slammed others or that he's going to pay the legal bills if somebody takes a swing at somebody, that can only be seen as encouragement and incitement. Mm -hmm. And maybe it makes him and you know, his, his people feel good at a rally that's gonna sort of generate that type of applause because it shows that he's being tough and strong, but it's really showing, I think, a weakness. And this is what, unfortunately, a lot of bullies and a lot of individuals do. Uh, and he's pandering to those, I think, very, very uh, disturbing uh, sentiments of some people that want to take matters into their own physical hands as opposed to working through these problems. And uh, that's why I think it's so important for somebody who really is the spokesperson for the government and for the country, he has to realize that every single day, whether he realizes or not, he's a role model. Not just a role model for these individuals who might be engaging this, but role model for the next generation of Americans. That's why I spent the entire day talking to a lot of students here at UT. I believe very strongly that the next generation of Americans should really cherish all the freedoms and liberties that we enjoy in this country and try to give back to this wonderful country of ours, either through public service or the, the good works that they do with their community. Or, and so, again, I, I really have some serious, serious concerns and uh, objections to what Mr. Trump has done uh, while he is serving in that very, very special and uh, esteemed office of the presidency. He needs to rethink what he is doing and saying. He should not be beating the, the tom-toms of, of anger and animosity and war. He should be trying to bring us together and heal us as a people because the polarization that takes, has taken place in this country over the last couple of years is really quite uh, antithetical to what this country is, which is to bring Americans together. Uh, so I, I tend to get very frustrated. I'm trying to figure out exactly how I can use my voice as a way to object to what he's doing. I am hoping not to add to that um, cauldron of, of emotions and feelings. Uh, but in having policy differences with the president, as I said, I've had them before, that's fine. But when a president does not maintain the decency, the integrity, the honesty that I think should be inherent in that office of the presidency, I'm going to call it out. I'm going to say this is wrong and there needs to be some changes here. And I hope that more and more people, more Americans, and especially people who are part of Mr. Trump's political party, Republicans, are not just going to turn a blind eye because of other things that maybe he is doing and that they want to see accomplished, but call him out and say, this should not happen. This is inconsistent with our values as a country and what it is that you should be doing as a president. And it's overdue. And too many of the individuals in the Republican Party are not fulfilling their responsibilities. Again, I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat, but I think on the basis of all of what it is we do, we should be Americans. And I think too few of them are putting being an American first and putting their political affiliation or their tribe or their agenda first. And I think for the good of the country, this needs to stop.